Um, I, I don't think they did. I, I was just saying, like, I watched most of it in Japanese, and that the because that's another one. Oh, where I see it's what you're being, um, Let me fix our video. It's being simul dubbed. So the first episode mm -hmm. was the first one that I saw in English. Uh, episode one of season two. Oh, I see. There we go. Now we're nice and big. Cool. Hey, everybody. Welcome to hey. Super Serial Showtime. Your Monday show where we talk about everything serial, movies, shows. If we want to talk about comics, it'll be here too. Books, I don't care, whatever. And right now, uh, we've got a few anime to talk about. But as always, I'm your host, The Metal, and joining me is my co-host, Marsupial Gamer, who I'm, I'm assuming is doing all right. Great. Yeah. Great. Oddly, I think my, my voice is a little hoarse today, but I'm actually doing better with a new... Uh... A new allergy medicine, so I'm actually doing pretty well. That's good, that's good. And for anybody watching, let me remind you at the beginning, if at any time you feel like supporting the show, you can do so through streamlabs.com slash vomitorium live and add to the pizza fund that I now put on screen, which is exactly what it says. You donate, I eat pizza. <laughs> it's basically just tip. Anyway, into our actual topics, we were talking about uh, Dungeon Beshi, right, because the uh, yeah. Season 2, Episode 1 had just come out, and you caught up watching the last episode of Season 2 before watching that. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was actually sh kind of shocked at the end of Season 1. Like, not the very last episode, but I guess, are we allowed to do spoilers? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about so a show that is currently airing that was, like, last mm -hmm. week. So if people don't watch it, too bad. Uh, that's just that's the, the amount of room we're giving. Right. <laughs> well, spo spoiler alert. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, I was actually shocked that they actually saved. Uh, what's her name? The girl they were. Oh, his sister. That the whole season was about. Yeah. yeah. They were trying to save his sister. And I was like, wow, they, they did it. <laughs> like I didn't actually expect them to do it. Like I know that you know they established this rule that if you die in the dungeon, you can't, you don't actually die. Yeah. If they can heal your body, uh, your soul doesn't leave like it does normally. But I was shocked that they actually found some remnants of her bones in to the be honest, in the dragon's stomach. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, I figured. They and were that it actually resurrect. worked. I thought she was just gone. And then when they resurrected her, she was all covered in blood. I was like, oh, is she like, is she just, does she not have skin? But then well, she realized, wasn't covered oh, no, she in did. blood. She was made out of blood and it, it took a while to uh, coalesce. Like I, she was literally made out of the dragon. Blood. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah. 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 yeah that's, well, that's what I, it's, that's what I thought. But yeah. then I thought, I, I think there's probably some excess on there that just hard to didn't tell. become part of her body. Yeah. That she did take a bath. But she, she's literally made out of dragon blood. Okay, okay. So that's yeah. why I, it looked like she was made out of blood, because she yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was like, you know, they were like sorting through the bones, and they found like bones of dogs or something? like some Yeah, kind of, of um, Wargen, then... which is like uh, another name for like oh. Wolfman or whatever. Uh, but they're they're going yeah. in like the really literal part of like a worgen is an evolved wolf that's more man like kind of like the werewolf you guys fought in that one uh, campaign I, I did for you yeah so that, that they just yeah. found some like werewolves that were native to the dungeon that also got eaten by yeah. the dragon but yeah it's like uh, they actually <laughs> somehow they knew their anatomy well enough that they reassembled her bones and the right positions and... and luckily they knew some like forbidden dark magic as well that that was helpful <laughs> yeah so yeah and then but then of course you know things go sideways after that yeah so. can't i'm trying yeah. to remember her name was it like fallen or something like that Fa yeah fallon i thought they fallon. were yeah, calling some, her in some, english some fallon. some f name yeah i think i think that was it yeah and uh uh, I guess she was actually pretty close friends with uh, the elf girl. Yeah. Uh, let me see. It's like, uh, I, I can never remember. Marcel or something like that. 
I'm trying to remember some yeah, yeah, French yeah. name. I have to go. Yeah. Okay. Mar Mar Marcel. So Marcel. Fallon, oh, F-A-L-I-N. Yeah. Marcel. See, I, I can never remember any of their names. I, I can remember um, Senchi's name. That, that That's an easy one to remember. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, Senchi is easy to remember. Uh, even La Laos. Laos? La Laos? L -A -I, I think it's, a, it's uh, Laos, like with, with a hard A, and you, you say the A, so it's like Laos, but um, I think they might call him Laos mm -hmm. in English, I don't remember. I watched the entire first season in Japanese and only this um, oh. first episode of season two in English, so I'm hearing like a lot of the Japanese pronunciation in my head, not the English. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, I was shocked that they actually did it, Yeah. but, uh, but yeah, then apparently the... Uh, <laughs> What was it? The Mad Mage of the Dungeon? Yeah, uh, the Dungeon Keeper. The, the actual who, crazy dude who runs the place. Yeah, who I thought at first was a girl, because of course. Um, no, it's just a pretty <laughs> pretty elf boy. That's all it is. Yeah, but they but they ran into him when, when, when Laos went into yeah, the painting. Uh, yeah, yeah, when he was trying to eat the food. I didn't... Yeah. That's a that was a good payoff. Like I didn't think anything of that after that episode, like because there was a there was one person in the painting who was like, "Wait, the hell are you doing here?" Like everyone else Honestly, was just you know. I watched like it all an NPC. at the same time the whole first season, so uh, I didn't have to think about it too much. But the second that that episode ended, I was thinking like, "This guy has something to do with the dungeon. We're gonna see him again later." Yeah, I think I thought that at the time, but that that was like months ago or whenever I saw it. Whenever I saw that episode, so I kind of forgot. But, but yeah, yeah that he was went very and uh, kidnapped Fallon because she's not just made of the dragon now. From his perspective, she is the red dragon that's supposed to be like guarding the dungeon and finding the uh, old king. So he's like, I need you. You're coming with yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden she was acting like she was the dragon. Like she thinks that, or she like has some sense that she's the dragon too yep. i felt like because she seemed like hypnotized almost well but see so that was he has confusing control to over me. all of the monsters in the dungeon and now she is made out of the mm -hmm. dragon so that probably gives the mage partial control over uh her okay so that was confusing to me i the, the way i initially interpreted it was that she was always working for him even before that but I guess not. No, no, no. She's just now. She is. Out. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. For a second there, I was like, "Wait, was she always on some kind of clandestine mission that she didn't tell them about?" But no, it's pretty it easy to piece reason. together because early on, uh, they did men when they were talking about the mage, and we didn't just didn't know that that elf was the mage yet. They were talking about how mm. there's a mage in the dungeon, and he controlled the whole layout of the dungeon. He could control all the monsters in the dungeon and stuff, which implicitly mm. means he could control the dragon. Uh, so it was pretty easy to piece together that now that she is made out of the remains of the dragon, uh, that has some influence yeah. on her. That's also why she was able to block the explosion, because dragons are heavily magical creatures, so she has, like, amped magic that she wouldn't have had before. Did she do that? I thought it was Marcel that blocked No, it. no, no. It was her. And they were all shocked. She didn't even okay. know she could do it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they went to that other party. That's weird. It had like a dog, a dog man guy. In that other party. Yeah, that's, uh, so. Cobalt. That, that's how Cobalt's look. In, oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Which I hmm. like. So, there's some weird things about Cobalt in pop culture, right? And I blame hmm. D&D for this, 100%. It's all Dungeons & Dragons' fault. They can go fuck themselves. Uh, but... They Cobalt. made them into lizards. Yes, they did. And kobold is a Greek word that just means goblin. It means the exact same thing. So if you have goblins and kobolds in your world, it's kind of weird because the words mean the same. But in older mm. lore, the, uh, kobolds are described as having like dog-ish faces. Now, that doesn't mean they're dogs. It, it's kind of interesting when yeah. people make them more dog-like. Uh, even goblins, you could kind of describe them as having more snout dog-ish faces. But if you're going to actually try to separate them from goblins, it is cooler to lean more into that dog kind of uh, look. But, I mean, if you look up old kobolds, yeah. goblins. 
D and D kind of almost mixed like a dragon and a mm. dog. So well, they, they they're they're all they always the way back scaly in like e like first edition. They were more dogish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have seen dog like kobolds in some like video video games from Dungeon D and D. Like like uh, here, this is from. I imagine this is from like first edition. But yeah, like in pool in in uh, pool of radiance, mm -hmm. they definitely look very dog like. But they also have scales. Yeah, here they they've been leaning into making them more reptilian over a very long period of time, uh, until the point now that all like the dogish features are just gone. Yeah. The other thing that's confusing is like, like in uh, Tolkien, like goblin and orc seem to be interchangeable to yeah degree. um they're pretty much they, they've sometimes been used for different tribes but it, it's more of like the different tribes of middle earth have different names for things and yeah. it's not until you get to like specific hybrids like the uruk High, that that is a specific thing but otherwise right. like right. going back to the hob and stuff like goblins and orcs are basically the same yeah like goblins are just like slightly smaller Orcs. Well, some of them are they're huge. Just, they're still orcs, right? Like, like the yeah, Goblin King true. is gigantic. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. Anyway, yeah. A little side. But I, I, I kind of like little, little, little fact aside that the kobolds they're they're basically just dogmen. <laughs> In this here. Yeah, which is weird. Because I didn't they even have get wargs, that. and a lot of times people make wargs their dogmen instead, but these are actually more bestial things, I guess, to separate them from the kobold hmm. even further. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and they have their own halfling and everything. Yeah. They which actually do, do, like, um, they, they look more like children. In this. Yeah, they, I think they call them halffoots, is the, like, the specific yeah. names they use for it, which is what uh, Chilla is, uh, or whatever his name is. Chilchuck. Chilchuck, yeah. Uh, Chilchuck is a half foot. He's also like 29 yeah. and has kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Like, I never really. Yeah, like in D&D, &D, they don't look like children. They just look like small adults. But in this, they definitely look childlike. Yeah. But he didn't act like it, that's for sure. But if you did pay attention, they did tell you that the dogmen were kobolds very, uh, I wouldn't say very, sure. about like halfway through. It was about when um, they finally made it to Senshi's place, and it was right after they harvested from the golem that they were going to take the vegetation to sell it somewhere. And then they got mm -hmm. attacked by their, their like orcs, right? to find yeah. out that the orcs were actually the people he was originally going to sell it to. He just didn't want to go that far down into the dungeon to sell it. And they're like, oh my god, it was orcs? We were hoping it was something like goblins or kobolds, and then it showed a picture of both behind them while they were talking about it, and you saw, like, this really <laughs> derpy dog man after he said kobold. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. there's. I, I think there's some other, like... I don't know. There's some intrigue going on mm -hmm. that I, I haven't been able to follow because I don't know. I, maybe I'm not paying close enough attention with this, uh, this guy who keeps traveling. Like he can instantly travel to this, to like lower levels from the surface yeah. and back. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he has complete control of the dungeon, which, which includes his location no. in the dungeon. Right. Or are you talking about someone else? No, uh, no, I'm talking about this, this, the guy who, I don't know. There's this other magic user guy who's doing something. I, I don't know what he's doing. Um, he he was with that other party. Oh, you're talking about the researcher, against... the old man. Yeah. 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 He could go down um, at a normal, like he could go back up instantly, but he has to go down at a normal rate, right? It's like a, it's almost like a return oh. spell thing that he does. Oh, I see. I thought it yeah, was just yeah, a yeah. portal. To but uh, he, he's way. a researcher, and apparently he's working for the lord of the area, or, like, whoever runs uh, the place. He might even be above the lord. It might be, like, the actual king. Yeah. I, I don't remember. But he's, he's definitely working for somebody who has rule over the land, and that's why he's researching the dungeon. Like, they have interest in what's going on there. Likely, um, mm -hmm. if it was the lord of the area, he wants to actually get the throne, because the throne makes you king. 
right? Like, you, you actually get full mm. control of the dungeon and the land directly above it. Hmm. Yeah, sadly, I, I, I need you to, like, explain this show to me. After I've, even, <laughs> after I've watched every episode, I'm like, I still don't know what the hell is going on. I mean, I know the general story, but, uh, yeah, there's this other yeah, and, side stuff that I'm just not following. Yeah, and luckily, we watched it really recently, because at least in, in the immediate, I'm really good at absorbing lore. Like, it just kind of sponges in. But if it takes too long, mm. I just start pushing it out for other things uh, I care about more. <laughs> yeah oh well uh yeah i i don't know i i guess we'll see how season two goes i really like season one and and then i didn't particularly like the first episode of season two but yeah i did just because we'll like see. season two's first episode actually feels more like the cliffhanger that season one should have ended on yeah. Because season one just ended on a nice wrap up, but they were still in the dungeon. So you're like, sort of. well, since they didn't go back up, I guess anything could happen to them, right? And then the first episode is the thing happening. I feel like it. I'm glad it didn't end on a cliffhanger because if I watched it originally, I would have been upset that I didn't get to see it till next season. But mm. from a tactical perspective, it does seem like the type of episode that a season should have ended on. Because like, oh great, now we're gonna have to well, go even deeper to find the sister and save her. Because they have to go back up now. Did she go off? Did she go off with the uh, the mage? I thought she went off with him in in the last episode. Yeah, she's, she no, no, no. It was this episode that uh, the mage came up and attacked oh. and everything. And now they have to go. It's probably because you watch them both together that you're you're mixing it. But yeah, the, yeah, because Netflix episode... will just go one into the other, yeah. and I can't. Yeah. So the last episode ended with the feast that they had. And then they went to bed, mm. right? And then I think she woke up and then it cut, right? Like she was going to go. And oh. then it started up, rewind to her waking up in the bed. And then she meets the mage. And all that stuff happens in this first episode. For, so from there on out, oh, wow. that, that's the episode, including her leaving, uh, them freaking out. Um, and now they decided they have to go back up. Right, because at least she's not getting digested right. now, right? So they have more time. They can go. Yeah. They can resupply, uh, maybe hire some help because now that they know about the like who the mage is, the dragon's done, but his sister needs help. Maybe they the lord will hire people to help provide them for this crusade that they wouldn't do before. Yeah. Plus, with the help yeah, of the orcs, to... they could get down here even faster than they did last time, because the orcs now owe them. Right. Um. Wait. I'm trying to find. Okay. So really, it's, I'm confused. So, how many episodes of season two have there been? Just that one. I Just think. one. Yeah, yeah. Unless another one came okay. out while I wasn't uh, watching, but. I, I think season two aired last week, so I think I'm caught up. I feel like you described the final episode of season one. I don't know. I'll have to go back and rewatch it. But I thought that she disappeared, and then they ended up running into the orcs at the end of season one. No, no, that happened this the season two, season, uh, episode one. How it's only twenty five minutes long. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it it was right. pretty pretty packed because like I, a lot of yeah. the stuff with her and the mage started before the opening credits, like the the opening even started. Yeah, but they also like yeah. went and yeah, there's a whole had thing this where whole the half foot went the other and... party. Yeah, they also had the scene from the, the with this other party where they. It was like an illusion where they were all like fish people and the guy ended up having to kiss the the fish person and it, yeah. it turned out to be like their mage and it woke her up from the dream or whatever. Yeah. I'll have to rewatch it. was that a pretty episode, packed then. episode. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's tough. You're right. It's tough because I was watching it on Netflix and it just goes one into the other and I'm like, wait. Are we on the same episode, or did it go to the next one? Yo, unless there was another one after it that I haven't watched yet. Like, there might be an episode two that you watched and I haven't. 
Did you see the one where they're because the fish, like, fish thing doesn't sound and... familiar? Like everything I described was in uh, the first episode of season two. Huh? So I think there see, was another episode even, I didn't watch. They don't even break hmm. it up. So I'm how many episodes were in season one? Uh, let me let me was look it twelve? Because I have I have uh, I have the link right. Yeah. Let me let me let me. Oh, I had the uh, link. I think I'll find it now. Yeah, give me a minute. It yeah, see, I think. Yeah, I'm just looking up the episode. See, it's confusing because Netflix just has them all together. In fact, it just calls them all season one. Yeah, well, I mean, it could still be season one. It's just the second half of season one. Uh, a lot of shows are broken up by the um, winter, spring separation. Like, they take uh, the December okay. off or whatever, right? Yeah. See, okay, at least so that's I see the, where the confusion is. That's the the split that I had, right? So Yeah, yeah. When we left at the very end... Um, mm -hmm. Oh, wait, no, I need to look at the subbed version because that one is numbered more correctly. See, so yeah, see, we're you were talking about episode thirteen being sort of the next season. The yes, next yes, grouping. yes. So are we on fourteen okay. now? Yeah, I watched fourteen mm. as well, and I okay. thought that was the first one because the weird thing is episode one, eleven and twelve is called Red Dragon One, Red Dragon Two, and episode thirteen is called Red Dragon Three. So I thought it was all part of the same. No, no. So season. Red Dragon Two was the last one before the break. Of the season. Okay. So. Now I now yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah. Now I get it. So yeah, when I watched episode thirteen and I thought I thought that was the season finale. Yeah, so I'm behind no, episode. No. I think it's because I was watching it on the site that I use, even though I could be caught up if I just use Netflix. Like they probably just haven't uploaded the, the episode yet. I guess. I wish you knew I would have just yeah, on Netflix and watched it before the show. <laughs> yeah. Well I agree because episode fourteen, the one after that that you haven't seen felt like the first episode of the next season. That's what it felt Yeah, yeah, like I'm sure me. it did. Because like I was saying, I, was I think like, 13 felt suddenly, like it was a proper cliffhanger for things to end on. Yeah, and 14 kind of started off going in a completely different direction. Like, it started mm -hmm. off with a completely different party of people. Like, what are these people doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry me, to spoil uh, it a little bit. They, let me address... You know. No, it's fine. Uh, address the chat. Uh, Buck said that uh, the dwarf uh, essentially is effectively the dungeon's forest ranger. Um, yeah, more or less. That, that's a apt way of describing what he is. I mean, he still fights like a dwarf. He is expected. You know, he's like a burly axe user, but his skills are very ranger in, in every way. Like, he is a scavenger who knows how to cook anything, and he even helps, like, strangers out sometimes just because he's there. Um, Fizz says a lot of stuff that works in games are boring in anime. Uh, the problem with these is that, uh, they try to present a game and expect us to watch it. Uh, he'd rather watch Honor Among Thieves than Dungeon Meshi. One actually tries a story that tells a story based off a game. The other just presents a game and we're forced to watch it. Now, I mean, that's probably how you feel. Uh, I actually did not feel like I was watching something presented at a game the entire time I was watching Dungeon Meshi. It just felt like classic fantasy. I mean, a lot of things I'm sure you're just used to being in games, like a return spell or anything. But a, a lot of those things also existed in stuff like Elric Saga before D&D adapted them into games in the first place. So it, it just feels like high fantasy to me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. um, yeah, sorry about the confusion, but, uh, yeah, we were all confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did, so you can't explain to me what's going on in the next episode. I can't yet. yet. No. <laughs> Stuff. Well, that, yeah, that's weird. Cause I thought the kobold showed up in episode 13. Or there, well, there was another kobold as well that showed up before so I don't know if um, 
is it the same uh, side party that's been recurring? Because they had a cobalt in them. The yeah. one with the uh, the yeah. uh, treasure bugs, right? I believe so, yeah. Okay, so that my mind's probably just remembering that character when you're talking about the yeah. cobalt. Yeah. Yeah, because they decide that they're basically like, so basically, here, here's what's been happening with this other party. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably, I'll catch up on it. I'll, now that I know that it, one, airs in between our shows, which I should have figured anyway, I'll just catch up mm-hmm. again beforehand. I, I just figured that the site that I use conveniently to watch stuff would have already had it up. I'll, I'll just catch up on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. I believe it says, I think, I think they come out on Thursdays. Thursday? Yeah. It'll probably just be something I watch after our Thursday show. Yeah. Or actually, maybe usually Netflix drops things at like one o'clock in the morning my time. I'll just watch it before I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Yeah, Buck is saying I it is order as some... well. It's uh, the the people who died to the treasure bugs and then got brought back and they died to the fishermen. Yeah. Well, spoiler: they apparently get turned into fishermen, but yeah. <laughs> is that a fate worse than death? Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I, I I'm feeling a little ill, so I think I'm gonna order some food while we're talking. Okay. <laughs> I ate before the show. Yeah. I didn't have time. So anyway, we can talk about something else. You can maybe you can explain uh, or you can tell me about Sandland. Yeah, I guess I can because I I thought you were gonna watch it, and I guess you just didn't find the time to. Sorry. Yeah. But I, I uh Yeah. Sorry. I definitely watched it. Uh, all of what was currently available at the time, I even checked. That one I checked before the show to make sure there wasn't another episode uh that aired uh before hopping on. I don't know how they're handling the seasons. I I don't know if it's going to have multiple seasons or if it's just going to run till it's done as like a a mega season. Mm-hmm. Because uh, Sandland, as a serial, isn't very long, right? It's, it's one of Toriyama's shorter uh, things that he's made. But mm-hmm. it is a show, or d- technically it's a manga by Akira Toriyama. It's technically, uh, this adaptation is his last work that he was directly involved in. Um, some of the stuff that he was involved in is still going to go. Like, he had notes and scripts and stuff for super going to the end of what they're going to do and then if they continue Dragon Ball after that it's probably going to have a different name because it's going to be separated from what Toriyama worked Mm on Uh, but they are going to go to the end of that but this is a a one and done just a serial story that I I, the chapters aired uh, launched in a magazine but I think you you can get it all in one volume uh, if you want to read it right Hmm. um It is about a desert land, mostly. They leave the desert land after the the first arc. But it's about a desert land that is kind of like in somewhat of a post-apocalyptic state. Like there was a thing that happened way in the past that they haven't explained yet uh, that left the world in this situation. And the humans and demons are kind of living amongst each other but separated into tribes. Like the humans don't trust the demons. Uh, the demons attack the humans to get water, but it's it's kind of a Mad Max style world where water is a big commodity that everybody's struggling over. And you're yeah. introduced to this uh, sheriff who sees a water finch, and he's like, "Well, there can't be water finches around here if there isn't some water." And it, it keeps flying back and forth mm-hmm. between the south. And he decides that he wants to go find it for everybody because the king is hoarding the water. And he wants to not deal with the king's in the like, exuberant prices. And he goes to the demons and is like, hey, let's make a deal. If you help me find the water, you guys can just live by wherever the spring is, as long as you still allow us to do pickups. And we can be on peaceful mm-hmm. terms. So the fiend prince Beelzebub and his like retainer thief go with the sheriff and they go on this like journey to find the water. And there's a bunch of escapades and stuff that happen along the way. But, uh, why doesn't the English it's... translation just call them yokai? It sounds better than demon. Uh, well, 
it's actually kind of the opposite in this case. It's they were using a word like yokai to stand in for demon, but because it's actually the Christian Satan and Beelzebub that the characters are based off of, translating it back to demon is actually accurate in this case. Not like in Inuyasha where everything that's called a demon in the Japanese is literally called a yokai and it fits more because it's like Shinto myth. Um, this is one of the few cases that it makes sense to change the name to demon. Kind of like how um, uh, Deborah in Dragon Ball was the demon king because he literally came from hell in that case. Uh, he was very, very heavily influenced off of like Greco-Christian uh, mythology when it came to those characters. Mm -hmm. um, so they go on this trip. They get in uh, a fight with the actual kingdom and their army. Then it re um, reveals that the sheriff was formerly a general that led to the near extinction of one of the people because he was just following an order and he didn't know that it was um, kind of like a suicide mission where his, his superior was sending him there to get rid of this like uh, stubborn general and those people at the same time, but the general survived. So he, he's got like beef mm -hmm. against the kingdom. And it, it's a fun little journey. They eventually find the uh, the water. They take out the, the guy who tried to kill him before. And then they move on to another. They go from Sandland to Forest Land, which is in the south. So there, there's more places for them to go after they're done with the Sandland. I, I think the storytelling's just... great. Oh, what did you have to say? Mm -hmm. I was gonna say the the animation looks very old school. I mean, especially I hate the animation. Some, well, this yeah, there's some scenes that look like they could have been done in the the eighties or not, you know, nineties mm -hmm. at best. Like I will get to that. <laughs> yeah, because you you could only guess that from a still, for the most part. It's right? very like, yeah. Because the, the entire show is done in 3D computer animation. And for what? most of the show, for Sandland, it is very, very obviously computer animated. Really? Yeah. Like, the, be the beginning doesn't look like it is. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look anything like, um, say, like Dragon Quest Eleven. Right. I mean, that's that's yeah. very 3D round looking characters. And well, stuff. what they did was um, I mean, and this, this is something looks... they've been doing in the games for a while. And even the last um, Dragon Ball movie, Dragon Ball Super Superhero was done in the same style. They put like a stroke around it to make it look more like a traditional character. But like, especially on close ups, you could tell that this is a 3D model with a stroke around it. Mm. And because of that. For 90% of the scenes, it feels really, really stiff, right? Hmm. It, it doesn't feel dynamic. There's some scenes, and I, I can remember a few of them off the top of my head, like uh, the fight with, um, I think his name was Moriel, the angel, or is it uh, Moniel mm -hmm. or Moriel? It's something like that. Uh, but there's a fight with the angel, and there's, there's a couple shots where, like, yes, I could tell that they actually went in and they edited parts of the model to get a more dynamic shot than they would have if they just left the model uh, in the shape that it was. Like, they, to, to get, like, a dynamic punch, they would have had to expand the size of the hand so the camera uh, angle yeah. looked appropriate. There's some times where they go in and put extra effort, but for the most part, the animation felt really, really lazy, like they were rendering it in a game engine. So I, I thought the storytelling and the pacing and all that was adapted really well. Uh, I thought the voice acting in both the Japanese and English version, because I, wa I watched the first episode in Japanese and then the rest of it um, in English, uh, just because I didn't realize it was English and it was easier for me to watch it and work on something at the same time if it was. But I thought mm -hmm. uh, all, all of that part was good. I was just left disappointed by the animation pretty much the entire time I was watching it. I thought it was a really lackluster way to interpret Toriyama's like last big project. Yeah. So who's this uh, pink pink guy with the crazy hair? That's uh, Beals, short for Beelzebub. He's the 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 demon okay. prince, the fiend prince, son of uh, Lucifer, who is the actual king of the demons. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
Fizz Joseph says, the Japanese have never been that good at CGI cartoons. I'm going to go further and say, nobody's ever been that good at CGI cartoons. Most of them look like shit by comparison to 2D cartoons. There's a few decent ones that stand out, but almost none of them feel as lively as if you were to uh, 2D animate. Now, there's some pretty bad 2D cartoons as well that are feel stiff. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to argue with that, but... At least you get this dynamic range with 2D animation. CG, it's, it's it's kind of like the standard, the status quo that the animation is going to be stiff. Yeah, I guess. I don't know why. I mean, did you find Dragon Quest XI stiff animation? I guess uh, a little. more or less. But the thing is, like in a video game, I give it a lot more slack, right? Because the mm -hmm. scenes are supposed to be more serviceable in a game, as opposed to, um, like, you can, you play most of the game. You're not watching most of the game. With a show, though, you're, yeah. like, watching most of it. And I won't argue against Cloudy with a chance of meatballs being dynamic. That is one of the few on the list. But we're, we're talking, that's more of an exception to the general rule. And mm -hmm. the, the show version actually was stiffer than the movie. So movies tend to be more dynamic but because they have a higher budget and they take more time uh even dragon ball super superhero was is more dynamic than the show is and i thought that was fairly stiff but the show is because you have to spread the budget across the whole show they they tend to try to take shortcuts like anybody does in animation and it's just it it feels lifeless almost at times when you watch a show like that yeah it's like yeah but you've, you've heard me rail on um what was it? Uh, Beast Wars or whatever. Countless times. Because I just... Oh, I, think, I, I I thought that the show looked ugly at the time. I couldn't... No, yeah, I never watched it. Primarily because I hated the way it looked. Yeah. And, and it was just like... Even at the time, it was like... Yeah, CG isn't ready for this yeah. or something. I mean, and I at it least, just wasn't... Mm -hmm. At least this looks like to the standard of a video game cutscene mm -hmm. it's just like I, I can't let it slide like i can while playing a video game <laughs> right because a lot of yeah. these I, i've played uh fighters which actually does a better job of looking like a 2d uh anime or i've played like xenoverse and a bunch of these other dragon ball games and it's like yeah i let it slide this isn't exactly the peak of animation and there's even mm -hmm. uh times where I wish they just 2D animated the scenes instead of just rendering everything in engine. Well, it's weird. Like, yeah. some scenes look 2D animated and very good, but then there was another scene a minute ago, I just got, you know, on play here, that it looked exactly like you were saying. Like, the, both characters looked like video game characters. And they just yeah. stood out from the background. Like, there's definitely wide really? shots Right, where you see a, a bunch of characters that are smaller, uh, where the cell mm -hmm. shading really takes over, y you can hardly even tell. Right, it just kind of blends in with the background. It, it it compresses well, but then like on close ups, yeah. right, you see like a close up of somebody's face, and you can tell that there's like a modeled mm -hmm. nose that's there. It's weird because like this general guy, he looks like fully animated. Like I guess he's not, but or I guess he's CG just like everything else. But he looks really good, but he's talking to these other guys and they look like cartoon characters in a real world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or like you'll see them driving the tank or whatever. And mm -hmm. the tank, I mean, it, it works a little bit better because it's a stiff object. You don't want it necessarily bending. Though one of the cool things yeah. about cartoons is that you get objects that are normally lifeless to feel more alive mm -hmm. when they do bend with the uh, imagery. Uh, yeah. But, like, this tank driving on the ground, you don't mm. mind as much, right? It's just, like, sliding and stuff. It's like, okay, that's a stiff object, though. I, I will say mm -hmm. not all CGI used to make anime is bad, though. It's just notably, I hate this style of trying to make it look like the popular DB video games like they did with um, Superhero. Mm -hmm. A lot of 2D, or, like, what you, you think is 2D anime is done with 3D models now. Or, like, not the whole thing, but a lot of the show will be done. Spy yeah. Family has a lot of 3D modeling done in it where they just flatten it uh, to make it 2D in post. Like, 
mm-hmm. the lighting is just like completely flat with cell shading. And there's times where like I've got an eye for this since I know how the animation works and I've done a lot of like study into it that I can tell like you did that with a uh, 3D camera and models. But it doesn't look bad yeah. in Spy Family. It matches the rest of like the 2D art when they're not doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, Invincible does a lot of that too where there are some scenes that are clearly uh, hand drawn and there's some scenes where they have models that match the hand uh, drawn art and you could tell that it was clearly a 3D model that they did like a panoramic turnaround but then flattened it to look 2D right it's not Mm -hmm. that it's always bad this just particularly doesn't do uh, do my fancy yeah I mean I think I think I think it is a it was a conscious choice because they're 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 trying to take the sort of the lower budget '80s uh, and maybe '90s uh, animation, where I, I guess it's a lower frame rate, or they just don't have the budget to animate yeah. every frame. You know, so the mouths kind of move. You know, you can see like the individual frames of movement in some cases. Um, it seems like they're trying to emulate that sort of old school look but with 3d Mm -hmm. models and it just doesn't quite you know i actually what i would love to see artists do i have an example i've I've, i think i have it bookmarked on twitter so i'll pull it up but this is probably my favorite example where the heck are my bookmarks of um somebody using 3d to make a 2d animation i gotta find where the heck my book (coughs) south park (laughs) there we go and it was somebody made a like a Ranma one half scene, like their their own mm. uh, scene of it. Oh, come on, click. I'm trying to make the whole thing big before I share it. I thought oh, okay, there's no sound too. I was like, do I have to insta mute this? <laughs> um. Yeah, you know what? I'll just I'll just full screen it. I I don't. I don't yeah, care. like let me. Because shows us right, like like. It, if they, they could have. I mean, this was a conscious decision. They yeah. c- could have done it in a more um, Studio Ghibli style if they wanted to. Yeah. Let me. The exact same animations, but just overlay a different. Okay. You know what? I can't full screen this. My uh, my computer's not liking that. <laughs> oh. Let me. Uh, we'll we'll just watch it in the window. We'll just watch it in the window. Um, I just need to fix this real quick so that people can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is this uh, really nice animation that somebody made of some Ronmo and half characters. This entire thing is done in uh, 3D models and with filters on it to make it look flat. And this is a very, very dynamic scene. I would love to see people Mm -hmm. do stuff like this. You could do a whole show like this. It's got smear frames it's got like dynamic foreshortening it looks great i would watch a whole sh- whole show like yeah. that if somebody gave the budget yeah. and at times you can like especially the walkway you could tell that it's done with 3d models but it looks good enough that most of the time you forget yeah and if you're watching on youtube it's uh or if you're watching um it's not quite as uh what's the word choppy is yeah, yeah. As I'm seeing it on YouTube. But... Yeah, that's just because that um, sharing the stream to Dude. Discord is kind of slightly yeah. uh, overloading the encoding. But yeah, there we go. Yeah. Well, that's actually, that was pretty smooth ending there. <laughs> but like, that's the that's what I want to see people use 3D animation for. Yeah. It, it looks great. Yeah, but you... You didn't like the uh, the 3D Ghibli style uh, Ocarina of Time video, did no, you? No, I didn't say I didn't like that. Really? I, I just said uh, with the lower frame rate and stuff, it would I would prefer to play a game that looked like that than just watch that. But I I, I thought it looked great. Like I mm. would love to play a game that looked like that. See, I don't know. I I would prefer my games to have a higher frame rate. <laughs> well, I. It's not even about, like, the game having higher frame rate, right? If that animation has yeah. a specific fixed frame rate. You'd still be playing it at 60 frames per yeah. second if it ran properly, or at, at worst, 30. Um, I just care about things functioning right. 
because a lot of these old sprites were moving at about mm. uh, an equivalent, more of like 12 frames per second, uh, if you count how many actual sprites were in animation. But they were like doubled up to meet like a 24 frame per second uh, cycle. And they looked great. I love it. As lo yeah, in the old games, right? Even though the game, the screen, well, 3D it was refreshing. 3D. No, I'm talking about like the old sprite games, right? Uh, I'm trying to use this as an example. Like a lot of the old sprites, uh, um, they if were you actually 60 count frames per second, I thought. the game was running at a refresh rate of 60 frames. But if you're actually counting the sprite oh, animations, okay. right? They're actually cycling oh, yeah. for it's 12 frames, rate. but they're doubled up. Like they'll be on the screen for twice as long to be a 24 frame per second yeah. cycle. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. And it looked fine. I as, see what, what I care is, like, as long as the game functions, as long as, like, if a, if a thing's going to be intentionally capped for artistic purposes, do my hitboxes function mm -hmm. right? Am I going to be hit out of frame? Like, as long as you make it right, yeah. I don't care. A and I want it running properly. But you can do artistic things like that. And I, I think people mm -hmm. will still enjoy the game. But we're not talking about games right now. We're talking about animation. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, I, you haven't watched Pokemon Concierge, have you? I have not. I, it's on my list and I keep forgetting to. Yeah. Did you watch it? Yes. If you don't like choppy animation, <laughs> you're not going to like it. Of course, it's, it's uh, um, what do you call it? Stop motion. Yeah, no, I'm fine with so, that sometimes, right? Yeah. It's like um, why I, I'm not a super fan of it, but I'm fine with the stop motion in the Lego movies because they're, supposed to look like stop motion yeah. lego films but i didn't like it in um spider-verse because spider-verse mm -hmm. looks like it should be animated but they did it all choppy like it was almost stop motion um like it, it's yeah. fitting so pokemon concierge i probably won't have any problem with it i, I do i love stop motion yeah and I, I think i read like people were saying well wait a minute isn't it CGI just meant to look like stop motion? No. I think it was actually stop motion. We, we, we looked at it, right? And it actually has, yeah. like, little figures. They've got different heads for each, like, expression that they were yeah. replacing. And, yeah. I'm sure there's some CGI in there uh, to, like, lighting is probably corrected a lot with it. Maybe. There's probably some other things. But it looked like it was mostly as traditional yeah. as you could get with stop motion. Mm-hmm. I never understood Psyduck. He, all he does is get a headache. I don't, I don't get it. Oh, that's something that really just... Uh, it, it's in the Pokedex, but it mostly just comes from the show, right? Yeah. Uh, he's, he's an okay Pokemon. Uh, unlike Misty's, yep. where you had to get a headache to accidentally use the psychic powers, like your Psyducks can always just use their stuff. Yeah, that's what they go with in the show. Because yeah. the main character has a... I guess he's sort of the main Pokemon. Yeah, I just keep forgetting to watch it. I need to. Yeah, I'm, I imagine... Well, I don't know if I've seen every... Yeah, there were only four episodes. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them all. Well, Fizz has a question. I'm assuming that's supposed to be... Would it, not what it... Um, would it be smart idea to make an adult cartoon in the Tangled art style? I mean, I don't, I, I can't say that smart or not oh, yeah. just from that alone. Like, you need more context. Like, the plot, like, what's, what's the premise of the cartoon? You could. I mean, people, people make adult cartoons in every thing. style, you know? Like, look at Drawn Together, which was multiple styles, but, like. Yeah. You know. I you mean, also have to market it properly. You don't want it to look like something yeah. that's in a kid's movie that's not for kids without properly marking it to let people know that it's not for kids. Yeah. What was, there was like an animated movie recently that I was shocked that people brought their kids to, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it happens every once in a while. No, I, I, I remember hearing about that. I'm just trying to remember what movie it was. Cause it was definitely not a kid's movie. Yeah. I don't know. Let me see. Animated movies, 2023. Is this, you know, it happens every once in a while. It's like, wait a minute. Why are people taking their kids to see, <laughs> to see this? Like, yeah, like I, frankly, the South Park movie. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Fish Joseph, I don't think it's Sausage Party. That's an older movie at this point. No, that's not what I was thinking yeah. of. But yeah, that was just gross. That was just Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't think that movie is good at all. Um 
But it's kind of like not... Well, there was a lot of animation in it, but every superhero film is now. Uh, but live action, Deadpool. Like when a bunch of people brought their kids to see Deadpool, even though it was like, I think mm. it was rated R, right? And you're like, why... The first Just one, because there's yeah. a superhero a... movie doesn't mean you should bring your kids. There's literally an R rating on there. I don't know why yeah. you would think that'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it wasn't animated. I don't know. Yeah. Very vague description. Um, yeah. Well, I'm sorry you didn't... So, did... But did you like the story? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I, th I thought everything else in the adaptation was good for Sandland. Like, mm -hmm. everything else. I was just miffed by the animation the whole time. That was, like, the only thing bringing it down for me. So, there's nine episodes. Is that... You say they're going to... That's I, I gonna think be it's a, just going like to be... they're going to do another season? I think it's just a one and done. Like, it's still doing it. So, it's probably just going to be a single long season throughout the year that covers the whole thing and then it's done. Okay, so they're con are they continuing Because it's not a very long story. Episodes? Yeah. We're already in the second arc. Uh, we, we are in the, the myths of forest land. We're out of sand land. They already solved the first problem. Well. They shouldn't call it sand land anymore. <laughs> uh, it's sand land. <laughs> what do you think about the uh, the seeming I don't know if it's a tradition or the way that they uh, at least in Delicious and Dungeon change the intro and outro sort of music and you know yeah yeah well so that's another reason from why season I thought... to season the season had changed because they changed the uh, the opening, I think. But they also they sometimes do that across winter break, even if it's the same season. So, like, there's a lot. Yeah. I, I I remember I went through, like, 1,500 episodes of stuff before I came back, and there was a lot mm -hmm. of longer shows that I was watching where the yeah. opening had changed halfway through because that would have been when the break was. I, I'm perfectly fine with it. I, I prefer when mm -hmm. it is exactly the season change, so I know that I'm in a different season. But sometimes, like, openings aren't e equal. Like, you'll have, like, a killer yeah. opening at the beginning, and, like, I just wish they stuck with this opening. I know, right? Like, um, well, I, I don't know how many there have been for uh, Spy Fan. Um, I feel like there's been three different... Maybe openings and closings, maybe I, four. I um, skipped them most of the time. Like every time there's a new one, I do make sure to watch mm -hmm. the new opening and uh, closing. Yeah. But after that, like I'll skip it because I'm marathoning and I just want to get to the next episode already. I guess, I guess they're on the third one. And, and I liked, so I liked the first, the original opening of the show. I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. But the second one, like which I think came in halfway through season one, was absolutely killer. Like the second yeah. set of openings and closings were amazing. I mean, like that might be the one beautiful. I would like. I like the one. It might be the second set where they're all drinking the the coffee and they're like, you've got those dynamic big steps while they're drinking too. At that's, the end, that's, that's the, the third one. That's and the third I one. Okay. I hate I, like, it. I actually like that one. Oh uh, my god, yeah. I hate it. Ah, oh. <laughs> that's the one they started doing in season two, and I'm like, oh, it's so much worse. I, I like that one. Yeah, I actually thought all three were, were uh, fine so far, uh, but yeah, I mean, I hate those big steps. I I like the the part where they're yeah they keep pouring as it tea or coffee or something. Yeah, yeah. I, th I thought it was great animation. Uh, she she keeps catching it no matter where it goes. Um, I do like that part of it, but no, the, the, the second intro and outro are just fantastic. I, but again, sometimes American networks will actually agree with the audience and they'll just change it themselves. For example, Full Metal Alchemist, the, the beginning, the first uh, part of Full Metal Alchemist has one of the best 
intros to any anime ever, and it's Ready, Steady, Go mm. by Learch and Steel. So uh, uh, Toonami decided when they were airing it, they were only ever going to play Ready, Steady, Go by Learch and Steel. Mm. So they actually have a different version of the show that's clipped differently. So instead of having the updated intros, it's just always Ready, Steady, Go. And she's like, you know, mm. I agree with you. <laughs> It's not that the other intros are bad. It's just Ready, Steady, Go is the best one that any anime has ever yeah. had. Yeah, and see, you know, you and I have very different yeah. uh, tastes when it comes to Spy Family specifically because yeah. to me it, 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 it hits me right in the family way, I guess, you know, just, just the... Because uh, that second intro is where... It's just scene after scene inside the house, usually either cooking or eating or, you know, well, shows a brief part that, where... I'm not to say that it doesn't hit me in the family way, right? Even not having been yeah. a father myself yet, I, I still get hit in the family way by Spy Family. Yeah, There's just sure. other things in the show that I also really like about it that sometimes takes my interest yeah. more. Yeah, I just, I, I love the, the parts where, you know, Anya is like, she's like trying to cook or she's trying to make something yeah. in the kitchen and she ends up spilling it and getting flour all over her face and stuff. And the, and the look on Lloyd's face, he's like, you know. Yeah. He's just, you know, kind of pulling his eyes. <laughs> Lloyd is always exasperated. There's actually another one. Um, this I understood this one a bit more, and it's a show I've, I've been uh, bringing up lately just because it's. I rewatched it uh, in January, and it's one of my favorite anime I've, I've ever seen, despite how short it is. And that's uh, uh, Draga no To, with the Tower of Draga. And it has one of my favorite openings out of like any anime. Uh, I actually posted it in the content sharing earlier on. The song for it is Swinging by Muramasa. And the the opening is really, really weird compared to the show because the show itself is a high fantasy show, right? Because it's, it's based off of that game. Mm -hmm. But also, the opening is kind of slice of life. It, it, it doesn't feel like it belongs to the show it goes to. It's got all the characters in it. Sometimes you see them, like, in their armor, and there's some, like, fantasy stuff interjected, but they're, like, in Tokyo, doing Tokyo things. Like, Gil mm -hmm. is waking up from bed to hop on a bike to go to school, and looking at this, you would think you're either going to watch some type of, like, integrated high fantasy, like, maybe there are a bunch of people who are playing an MMO version of Tower of Draga together, or you're thinking maybe this is an isekai and this is where the people were beforehand, or, or some weird, something that would involve a slice of life portion of the real world. No, it's not involved in it whatsoever. The entire thing is a fantasy that takes place in ancient Uruk. Uh, that's just how hmm. they decided to do the opening. I love the opening. It would confuse you the first time you watched the show if you <laughs> didn't know what you were getting into. The second opening does the same thing with the animation with different stuff. The song just isn't up to par with Swinging because Swinging is such a good song. So I was like, ah, I wish you just used Swinging for both of them. But it, it's <laughs> it's a trend. It's a like a tradition to change the openings uh, for the anime. They've been doing it for a long time. In fact, yeah. to the point that people make entire playlists and soundtracks based off of openings. Like You'll just see like the show OP that... I don't think they'll ever change it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure I want them to, even if I do end up liking one of them a lot more than the others. Yeah. Hmm. I get the feeling uh, Fitzgerald has a very specific genre of taste. <laughs> I've, I've got that feeling for a very long time. <laughs> I'd never heard of this, but... yeah. See, I, interesting, I'm interesting characters. All right, I have a very eclectic taste. I'm, I'm all over the fucking map when it comes to things. Especially if you were to look at, like, the list of things that I watched. There's definitely things that have in common between the list with each other, but the whole, there's no average to this list of things that I watched. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I, I just kind of like a little of everything. Same yeah. with music. Like, I like a little of everything when it comes to music. Right? There's some people, mm-hmm. they'll say, like, I listen to everything. And they're like, well, yeah, but do you listen to this? And they'll put on some, like, uh, I don't know, Scandinavian death metal. Or they'll put on some weird indie underground electronic funk thing that you're like, that polka mix. And you're like, no, I don't listen to that. I, I'm the guy that actually does <laughs> listen to that. Like if I, I want interesting things, I'll just put on the Newgrounds radio for a while, and I'll, I'll listen to the the mix that has everything under the sun into it. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that that's my taste with like manga and anime, uh, even like Western shows too. If you've got something that's really weird, uh, I might not like it because not everything's good. But I'll probably give it a try, and I might end up liking it. I, I usually like to give something a try first. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that's, um... It's exhausted the stuff uh, either of us have watched recently, I think. I did have some... Yeah. Topical things to pull up. Oh, yes! Uh, an old movie is finally getting a sequel that I think most of us never thought was going to get a sequel. But it's going to be on Netflix, and it's coming out of nowhere. And Adam Sandler is finally making a, another Happy Gilmore. Really? Yes, he's making a sequel to Happy Gilmore, where Happy is much older, at, like, current Adam Sandler age. Well, that must be why it was, like... The original Happy Gilmore was, like, trending. Yeah, it moved up to, like, the top ten on Netflix. Oh, yeah, it's number two right now. Jeez. I was like, why is that on there? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's because people want to watch it for the new one. Uh, Happy Gilmore is one of my favorite movies. Um, I can never decide if if it is my favorite one from him because I watched Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison so much growing up. Yeah. I don't know. It's I, I feel like it's going to be terrible. It might. Just because you can't... I don't think you can recapture that time. Especially Adam Sandler so old. <laughs> yeah, so if he actually tries to um, play the same type of humor that he did last back then, that'd be fine. Which I've seen him mm-hmm. do uh, recently, right? Uh, recently. Within the last 10 years. I don't remember how old Ridiculous 6 is now. It's probably like somewhere between 6 to 8 years old. Uh, but mm-hmm. still, Ridiculous 6 is still fairly recently, and it had, like, that little Nicky type of humor. That vibe was pretty good. If he could recapture the humor he used back then, I think he could do it good. Mm-hmm. As long as he just doesn't make it like, I'm uh, Chubbs now. I'm the one who's going to be teaching another person. <laughs> And now I have, like, one of these yeah. Disney Channel stars that I've done grown-ups with, and I'm turning into another grown-ups. As long as it doesn't turn out like that, I think it can be a good movie. Yeah. And Carl Weathers died just this year. Yeah. That was sad. Yeah. I can't believe that Happy Gilmore is almost 30 years old. Man, 1996. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually remember watching it. With my dad, uh, not, uh, and we didn't watch it in theater or anything, I don't even know if it was, I assume it was, but when it first came to VHS, so the, the closest to new I could have watched it, uh, I, I watched it with me and my dad, mm-hmm. and it was, it was pretty good. Back then, it's still pretty good right mm. now. It holds up really well. Oh yeah, yeah, I love it. I've seen it so many times. And like, I talk about a comedy villain. Shooter McGavin is one of the best villains you could have for a comedy <laughs> movie. Like, one of the best antagonists. Yeah, yeah. He's such, like, a perfect prick. Christopher McDonald. Did you ever see the, uh, there, there was a, um, college humor sketch with Batman? Yeah, one of their where, Batman uh, sketches, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Shooter McGavin, oh, yeah. like, you're, you're such an underrated actor. It's like, well, you know, I've done other things than just Shooter McGavin. No. No, he said he he said something else. He said yeah. um, his character from Greece. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I forget what what who is he in Greece? 
Um, he had a, another. Well, I think he said it after he said I was in other name. things. Like, I know you're such a uh, talented actor. And he started like naming other things he was yeah. in. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But for a lot Goose, of people, Goose Shooter McKenzie. is the first thing that comes to their head. Yeah. Yeah, it was Goose McKenzie mm -hmm. was his character in Greece. And yeah, I think he, yeah, he said something like McKenzie. He's like, oh, thank, thanks for, for remembering that or something yeah. like that. <laughs> You're supposed to be scared of him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it wasn't that he was scared of him. He was scared of the fact that people didn't uh, remember that he was more than Shooter McGavin. Like, that was specifically his fear, that oh, this, like, actor that was going to go yeah. under the radar. <laughs> it's a really yeah. dumb fear. Uh, and I think uh, that's what the Scarecrow <laughs> was making fun of, too. It's like, really? You're afraid of that? Yeah. <laughs> and he, said, he, said, he said baths, and he goes, oh, yeah, baths. That makes sense that you're afraid. He's like, no, 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 baths. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, like, they, they 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 waste too much water. A shower can be equally refreshing. so much more efficient. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a good series. It was back when the college yeah, humor yeah. was good. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think it, I think it'd be good. I think because Adam Sandler started going downhill for a while, and it was right around the time. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like Click, but I count Click as part of the downhill trend. Uh, Spanglish, I think, was slightly before that. And you try to, like, branch out into these more, like, dramatic movies. Where I think yeah, Anger I Management didn't... was probably as dramatic as his movies needed to go. Where he was playing the straight character, but the movie was still funny. Right? So he could still mm -hmm. vary things up. Um, actually, in Happy Gilmore, in opposite to Billy Madison, he is closer to the straight character. Like, he, he's got his anger issues, but he's not, like this goofy guy that's cracking jokes. It's like everything else around him is just funny circumstances. Yeah. So he was doing that pretty early. Uh, I, I liked that dichotomy of his movies where sometimes you'd get like a Billy or a um, Bobby Boucher, but then sometimes you'd have like a happy or I forget the character for anger management, but like that character, which is pretty much just mm -hmm. exactly happy Gilmore dealing with anger issues. Um, yeah. Billy Madison was just, ridiculous and stupid yeah because he, cause I mean, he was I a guy who's but... in arrested development right so he had to crack out of it that was like the yeah. whole point of the movie yeah great movie yeah or like yeah. um bulletproof is another one that was more serious i but it was still a funny movie i think uh bulletproof was probably as serious as movies needed to get for him but he was trying to break mm. out acting and it's fine that he did stuff. It's just that it kind of usurped his comedy movies for a while. And then when he came back with like um, bedtime stories, which I got suckered into going to the theaters to watch bedtime stories, which was aimed more at kids. He's trying to get in the kids audience. I don't think he made a good kids movie until Hotel T Transylvania, which I don't care for the movie. It's not my cup of tea, but I can admit it's a good kids movie. Like I, I wouldn't argue with somebody who say they like Hotel Transylvania. Was that an Adam Sandler movie? He, he plays Dracula. Oh, he did? Yeah, and most of the other people that. in it are his friends. Like, uh, I think the, the wolf man oh. is Steve Buscemi, and, like, the... It is the hmm. One of them is... Uh, what's his face? Kevin James, right? I, I can't remember if it was, like, yeah. the, the mummy or something, but one of them... Like, it's all his crew of friends. It's Frankenstein, yeah. He was Frankenstein, yeah. And then yeah. there's, um, like, even... Uh, Rob Schneider is are, are in that movies too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was the Wolfman. Yeah, he was. The I have Wolf seen Man. that movie yeah. many, many times. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but like it, it's, I, it's Adam Sandler stuff, movie. right? Uh, I, it's not Happy yeah. Madison, but it is a Ham Adam Sandler film. They, like, he did it with a, the hmm. studio, and it was all of his crew. I guess you know I recognized all the voices, but it just didn't. I didn't make the connection. I don't. I guess I. I must have known Adam Sandler was the voice of Jack Dracula, but at least at one know. point in time, yeah. I just don't think of it that way, just because I don't know. It is very different. Yeah, but I think that's like the the first movie he made for kids that was actually good. Um, mm -hmm. Then he made some other stuff. I actually think Grown Ups is good. I don't really care for the first one. Grown Ups Two, I think, is good. I think it's a better balance of things for kids and uh, for adults. And it has, like, that ridiculous, wacky humor in it. Like, his old stuff. Like, there's a scene where Shaq, who's, like, a police officer, literally just launches a guy over a house. Like, complete... 
impossible human uh, inhuman feat of strength type thing but it's ridiculous mm. and i loved it like that that type of stuff is great uh he, he's kind of back to the like swing of things yeah grown-ups 2 was hilarious yeah uh, fischoso says uh how, uncut gems how do you feel about that i did not like it at all i i will not say it's a bad movie like i get why people like it i i can't say it's objectively bad it's just not the type of movie that i like uh, from adam sandler uncut gems I, I haven't heard of half these movies a lot the, so that's a more recent one because he had to deal with mm -hmm. netflix for like 10 movies right so mm. that's like the first one wow. he made i think was ridiculous six which is good if you if you like little nicky mm -hmm. and those type of movies that he does uh ridiculous six is good because they're it, it's obviously okay. playing on like the magnificent seven and stuff but they're all half brothers to the same father and right. they're all like different ethnicities and stuff with different backgrounds and they're they're pulling a job together and it, it's just mm -hmm. stupid it's ridiculous there's a part like terry cruz as one of their half brothers and he's like guys i hate to admit it but i'm half black as if they couldn't tell already like it, it's really really hilarious what's that uh taylor lautner or whatever his name is the guy from the uh twilight movies who played jacob right he was also in Grown Ups too. I think I think his name is Taylor. Not I can never remember his name. Um, he was in it. He played like their retarded brother, like they're actually like mentally handicapped one, and he had like this really thick neck that would not break. Right. So they did a whole thing where they hung him as like a distraction, and he starts like swinging in the noose with his thick neck. And he starts like singing um, the Great Trapeze, like uh, whatever the the Flying Trapeze, is the name of the song, while he's swinging from this noose, and everybody's like mesmerized by this guy who's still alive, and they're they're doing like a job in the background. Really, really good movie. And then everything's kind of be iffy since there. Like I also didn't care for the Cobbler. The Cobbler was another uh, Netflix movie that he did. I personally Man, didn't I've care for really Uncut exactly. Gems. Uh, there was that one that he did uh, with what's her face Jennifer Aniston I can't remember the name of it where they like go on a vacation but they, they kind of have to do like a like a spy job or whatever it's, it's an action flick uh, rom-com I, I can't what's the name of it uh, yeah. and the, these are all just like Netflix fronted all of these movies for him because you know he's Adam hmm. Sandler uh and also, most of them are just, like, excuses for him and his friends to go on vacation. Like, oh, almost all of them. Was they, it, he, hmm? was it uh, Just Go With It? I, that might be it. Is that the Jennifer Aniston one? I, th I think that might be it. I, hmm. it it's, got, it it's got a name like that where it's easily forgettable. I think they even made, like, yeah. a sequel to it as well or something. Uh, Spaceman is what he recently did. I didn't see Spaceman. I heard good things from Spaceman, though. Uh, there was a Halloween one he did. Where it's the character's name. It's like Huey something. That one was good. It reminded me of uh, Waterboy. Reminded me of Waterboy. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Halloween one that he did. Because he played a guy who was like slow, right? Uh, which mm -hmm. Bobby Boucher wasn't slow. Uh, even though he had a speech impediment, <laughs> people thought he was slow. He just was raised in a... A situation where he couldn't study or learn things and between a speech impediment and uh his raising people thought that he was like mentally handicapped uh this guy is oh God, what's the name of that movie it's like it, it's the character's name this guy actually was kind of slow but he was a well-meaning dude that um everybody picked on and he became like a crossing guard slash town watch type guy it was a good movie hmm Really good movie. I think even his love interest in that movie was played by the same love interest in Happy Gilmore. Like, she came back and acted. Oh. Um, let me, I'm just going to pull up his IMDb. That'll, that'll yeah. get me his, uh, the name of the movie. Gilmore cast... 
Uh, Julie Bowen. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hoobie. It was Hoobie Halloween. That was the name of it. That was a good movie. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Julie uh, Bowen was in yeah. it again. <laughs> Wasn't Ray she? Was she the wife uh, in uh, Modern Family? Uh, was she? Was that a different actress? Hey, let me click on I her and so. find out. Um, yes, yes, she was. I never realized that mm -hmm. that was the same actress as Happy Gilmore until literally right now. Yeah, she's she looked a little bit different, but yeah. Age will mm -hmm. do that. I guess. Yeah, but it's such a good cast. Like Ray Liotta before passing was in Hoobie Halloween. Tim Meadows is in it. Uh, Steve Buscemi, mm -hmm. you know, regular for Adam Sandler stuff. Keenan Thompson mm -hmm. is in it. Ben Stiller, like, great, great cast. Uh, what's her face? Um, yeah. The the chick from Cobra Kai. Uh, God, I'm trying to remember. The the one who uh, was bad, and and then started becoming good. The the one who actually was in the Cobra Kai class. I'm trying to remember her name. I know. Yeah, I don't know what the actress's name. Yeah, yeah, but she was, was in it too. I probably have to go to the all cast list to find her because her role is a bit smaller. A really, really good cast. Mm -hmm. That one's one I recommend. But he's been doing so many movies lately that people forget that he's even doing movies, right? Hmm. Um, Murder Mystery had a one and a two, which was. I didn't like murder mystery, but people liked it. You are so mm -hmm. not invited to my bar mitzvah. Leo, I heard good things about Leo. So that was the one he did right before Spaceman. And that was another example I wanted to bring up of like good kids movies. Because he plays like the class iguana, but he's like impossibly old. Like the cla no, nobody's questioned the fact that the class iguana has not died. And one day, one of the students finds out that he can actually talk. And he starts, like, solving all of the problems for the students that they have in class. Like, he, he's kind of, like, becoming the guidance counselor, uh, fairy godmother thing where he's, like, advising them through things. Because he's I'm, been around long enough that he kind of has, like, this wisdom of seeing people go through stuff. But he also has, like, a goal of his does own. He talk with, does he talk with Adam Sandler's voice? Um, yes, he's but, like, really, yeah. or he's not iguana. He's some type of lizard. Um, he, but, um... <laughs> Yeah, he, he he talks with like Adam Sandler's like derpy voice. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. He's a twa twa uh, Tara. Okay. A taru taru. <laughs> taru taru. <laughs> yes, he's a taru taru. I, I'd watch that movie. Adam Sandler is just like this derpy taru taru. Uh, causing problems <laughs> uh, throughout all of um, Von, uh, Von Diel. Yeah, or Von Adiel. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think he, he's, he's back on top. Like, he's made more good movies than bad movies, even if I haven't cared for some of them. Uh, he's not in that middle slump he was in from, like, the late aughts through early tens. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited to see Happy Gilmore 2. I do think there has to be some right, homage then. to Chubbs in there, obviously, uh, with yeah. the recent passing. Um, the way it's, they, they make it sound, though, it sounds like it's just like they say in the works, like does that mean he's still it's working on the script? Pre-production, they... yeah. Uh, he said that he's got like yeah. a million joke ideas for Happy Gilmore 2, which means the script's not done. Mm -hmm. Though knowing him <laughs> and his crew, like a lot of these comedic writers, even when the script is done, he's still going to be holding on to those jokes because they might change which ones they use in the middle of film filming. Just because it, yeah. it feels better. <laughs> Don't blame him. That's actually what made a lot of these old movies good. Like, um, all of his. 
But you look at those um, SNL production movies or the adjacent stuff, like Ghostbusters was good because the script itself wasn't uh, pigeon-held down to the script. Like, they didn't care. They, they just needed, like, this baseboard to go off of, and then they started joking and goofing off while filming. I, I think that's mm-hmm. what they need to do in movies. When you, when you are a comedian, you're like, hey, just let us roll. Let, it, let us live. Yeah. Well. I just hope it's as so serious as the original movie is. Because it's, it's a funny movie, but at no point in time does Happy Go More ever not take itself seriously. Like, most of the actors are straight face during everything that they do. And because of mm-hmm. how dry some of the jokes are, uh, it's great. Like, um, I can't remember, that famous golfer, uh, he's, he's the guy who got struck by lightning on two different occasions. Uh, but he was in there, right? And he's like, there's a, a group of three. The first two times, he's just like shaking mm-hmm. his head. And then the last time, he's like, yeah, and Grizzly Adams had a beard. Grizzly Adams did have a beard. And because it's the first time he talks, <laughs> like, it hits even harder that he talked just to correct Shooter McGavin. It's like, that's the yeah. type of humor we need. <laughs> we need that very serious, dry humor that just gives this air of comedy to the whole movie. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I'm sh- it, uh, um, what's his name? Bob Barker is surely dead by now, right? Yeah, yeah. So you obviously have to bring Drew Carey in. So, oh, yeah? Yeah, since he's the one that's been hosting oh, yeah. the prices, right? We're trying. Hmm. Well, all right. What, what, what are my specific assignments? Your specific assignments. I need- I, I need to watch Sandland, I guess. You need to watch I mean... Sandland, yes. And I need to catch up on Dungeon Meshi, which be easy. It's just going to be two episodes, the one I missed and then the new one coming up. Yeah. Um, I guess I better watch the new one. Yeah. But. I don't know. Let me think. Is, uh, is Space there something... Man on Netflix, Fizz Chozo? Is it one of his Netflix contracts or is that one to theaters? He might know. Is that a movie? Yeah, yeah, it was the most recent thing that he did, that uh, Adam Sandler. Because if that's uh, on Netflix, it, it I, I think we should. It is. We should watch that. It is on Netflix. Yeah. Because I haven't watched it yet. Let's both watch Space Man and talk <coughs> about that next time too. That's really easy oh, to watch. It's rated Little time. Is it? Is it a serious movie? I don't know. But you know, what? fuck it. Let's watch it. We'll talk oh. about it. If it's bad, we'll we'll rail it. <laughs> it's it's like a, a weird giant spider or something that i guess yeah my dad with. was telling me about it and he kept trying to get me to watch it and i have not watched it yet this is weird yeah he, he said it was um, a movie. Hmm. It's, it's it's interesting that it's rated r and it says it's sci-fi and drama it's, not it's, it's probably comedy. for gore effects i would assume is why it's rated r psychological hmm. yeah listen like it's new ish. We haven't seen it. If it's good, it's we'll praise new. it. If it's bad, we'll rail it. Either way, it's content. I mean, it's from this year. Yeah. Space Man. Uh, when when did that come out? It came out in February, at the end of February. Yeah, I think it was actually the first thing my like dad watched when we got internet back. Hmm. Interesting. Like, I feel like I saw something about it, but so it just it's, it was only out on Netflix. It wasn't like in theaters, right? Yeah, because he, he has an ongoing yeah. contract. I think he's even past the 10 movies that their initial contract hmm. was. He's just he's enjoyed like working it. with them as a production company. So they're continuing. Yeah. Hmm. That's actually the thing I like about Netflix, right? Uh, even though there is a lot of shit on there, too. They're just kind of openly working with a, a lot of people, even talented people like Adam Sandler. So it's like you get good stuff as well. And I don't care if there's shit on there as long as I also get good stuff for what I'm paying for. Yeah. yeah. And it's variety. Everybody, I, I don't even care if there's like woke stuff on there because some people like woke stuff as long as I also get non-woke mm-hmm. stuff, right? Like there, there's a little everything yeah. for everyone. I did hate it. The only thing that bothers me, go ahead. Oh, their algorithm. I hated it. I watched Chasing Amy one time on Netflix. I refuse to ever watch it on Netflix again. I'll just watch my archived copy. 
uh, because my feed was filled with gay and lesbian oh. movies for a month <laughs> before watching other things <laughs> fix the algorithm. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I saw that in the theater when it first came out. Yeah. I agree, Fizzchozo. No amount of critics can stop Adam Sandler from being funny. The only person that can stop Adam Sandler from being mu funny is Adam Sandler. Sometimes he is, sometimes yeah. he isn't. Yeah. I, 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 I'm wondering if I should watch, um, you know, not, we we'll, probably won't talk about it on the show, but uh, I noticed Everything Everywhere All at Once was on Netflix. And, I haven't watched uh, that either. I, I find it intriguing like i guess it got good reviews yeah everybody was like, praising it it's the, that actress is so old like yeah no offense but it's weird that she's in like an action i don't know what yeah. is it an action movie i don't know it's something she's like, a great my, actress though so i mean my I problem was that to... everybody was trying to compel me to watch it Right. Yeah. And if it was like, you know, we're talking about something on the show, even before we started separating the shows, if you said, hey, we're going to talk about this on the show, that was like your pick, I would have watched it. But the fact that like everybody was shoving it down my throat made me not want to watch <laughs> it, even if it's good. It's like, I'll wait till some later time to finally watch this thing. Yeah, I don't know what it was about. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to watch it, but I, at the same time, I don't. I don't know. It's weird. Like almost rebellious. I've been staring like, at I it. just don't want to watch this thing yeah. now. <laughs> I've been staring at it on Netflix because I've been trying to find something to watch. And I'm like, well, I haven't seen that, but I'm like, not in the mood for it. And next day, still not in the mood next day. Still not. Yeah. I, don't know. I don't know if I ever will be. But it's weird. But I think that's it. We'll talk uh, deeper about Sandland because you'll have seen it. Uh, we'll talk about the next episode of Dungeon uh, Meshi. And we'll talk about Spaceman. And then if we run out of time or need like a five minute filler in between topics, whatever <laughs> news like the fact that happy gilmore 2 is happening yeah hmm? have you seen uh did you ever see grand Gran turismo i've not seen it yet it's pretty good i should it was on my list of things to watch hmm. anyway yeah, yeah i just i'm just perusing netflix there is going to be a joker too right I think I saw Yeah, but they're going to turn it into a jukebox musical, so... What's up with that? I don't know. <laughs> jukebox music. I think part right. of it is because anyway. like, Lady Gaga is going to be in it, so like, there has mm. to be singing. <laughs> I don't like, for the most part, jukebox musicals. There's a few exceptions that I like, but for the most part, I find them wholly unoriginal. Even even if you're trying to write an original story around it, I kind of liked um, Across the Universe, but it's like the one that stands out. Half of jukebox musicals are just all Beatles songs. Yeah, because there's like twenty you mean... Beatles jukebox musicals. But a jukebox musical is when the songs are not original to the musical; they're like right. other songs that are put into it, like pop culture songs. Yeah. Almost like uh, the Mario Brothers movie. It's practically yeah, a... yeah. But it's exactly. not a musical in the fact that they weren't singing. Like, the music doesn't exist in the world. It's there for the audience, right? Uh, yeah. A good example is um, Sing, the, the Sing series, which is also by the same creators as the Mario movie. They're jukebox musicals because all of the uh, songs they sing are mm -hmm. licensed music that already exists in our world. As opposed to Greece, yeah. where all the music is written for Greece, and even uh, in the case of uh, Beauty School Dropout, which wasn't in the original movie or it wasn't in the original uh, musical, it was still written for the movie. It's not some licensed song that they mm -hmm. used to fill time. I like musicals where yeah. everything was written intently, intentionally for the uh, musical. Mm -hmm. That's why I think uh, Blues Brothers, which feels like a jukebox musical because there are like two songs that are older like they do jailhouse rock mm -hmm. in it like every other song in blues brothers was written for blues brothers uh so it is, it is closer to that type of like original musical and that's still probably my favorite musical followed shortly by fiddler on the roof because fiddler on the roof is just f fucking good mm -hmm. have you ever seen chicago i have i've, I've seen chicago uh, 
I, I like kind of love that. I kind of yeah. love the music, uh, the the movie. Yeah. Like with uh, Richard Gere and um, the guy who was in Guardians of the adaptation. Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. I, really I, good. I think Chicago's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like a good musical. I, I don't. I don't. Even get Renee Zellweger. Yeah. I think she's really good. There's, there's a lot of haters hey. out there. Hey, hey, Rick. I mean, just Rick, for us Rick, to end. Rick Piper. Yeah. yeah. Hope you're, hope you're doing all right out there. But um, yeah, it is 930. So th- thank you all for watching. If you enjoy the show, please share it out with somebody else. If you really enjoy the show, want to go one step beyond, give a tip at streamlabs.com. So it's while I'm touring live. Adds up to the pizza fund. Uh, doesn't matter if you even do it afterwards. We'll read anything out in the next episode on um, Game Central Junction on Thursday. So until then, see you guys later. See ya.